Dr. Rochelle Walensky, the director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, on Wednesday delivered a rebuke of her agency's handling of the coronavirus pandemic, saying it failed to respond quickly enough and is now calling for the CDC to reorganize very broadly, according to the New York Times. She said, quote, we are responsible for some pretty dramatic, pretty public mistakes. This is our watershed moment and we must pivot. And bravo, I could not agree more. Uh, it is uh, frankly uh, uh, edifying to hear her admit this yeah. because the mistakes uh, were significant from the get go. And, and she wasn't in charge when these mistakes were made. But the, the biggest one being the just the testing debacle. The CDC actively outlawed people who were people were making their own uh, other companies. Researchers, scientists had made tests that worked. The CDC said no to all of those. We have our own. Mm -hmm. Use that. And then that one didn't work which put us a couple weeks behind at the, you know, right when we were at the, the most critical point of we knew cases were about to spike everywhere and deaths were going to spike. We were not prepared for this thing. Um, and this is the agency's entire job is to be prepared for something like this. Yeah. And then you get to, and, and now we're, we get round two with monkeypox and it, some of the same mistakes are being made. Like what is wrong with this organization? Yeah, I've been saying for a while that people who've been making these mistakes in the political context should just own up to them and say, I'm sorry. And that they should trust the public um, enough to admit that they're, they were wrong. And trust that out of that admission of wrongdoing could come a renewed public trust if it's earned over time. So I'm really glad that this is a good first step and I hope people take it in good faith as long as it seems to be offered in good faith and that changes are made. And to obviously reserve their judgment, to be, but to be looking forward to having a CDC that's more mm -hmm. responsive to the critiques that have been um, put out there over the course of the last year. And so I won't belabor the, the points that I made on my radar today going through a sort of a timeline of misinformation and backtracking on various pieces of public information. But I do think it's important to note that part of the problem here was this overconfidence and the smug overconfidence that got politicized that that said we know exactly what the science says we know exactly what works and what won't work mm -hmm. as as we were in an emerging crisis and no one could possibly have known and instead of just admitting that we're getting this to you, this information to you on a rolling basis we're giving you our best understanding of things i think that kind of hubris from liberals combined with uh, some kind of bad faith stuff from the right where they wanted to exploit ambiguity over the crisis created a really toxic mixture of misinformation that put the whole society mm -hmm. behind. And hopefully we can get back on track, but look, Joe Biden right now is talking about ending so many of the protections that we had, no longer providing free vaccines or you know testing as we're going into a fall where we're expected to have another COVID surge. People are going to go back inside. There's going to be more indoor dining. All of these cute little street side outdoor setups are going to shut down for the winter. And we're going to have to deal with the consequences out, outside of using tools like mandates that were so politically polarizing, we're going to have to figure out how to do this on our own. And we're going to need some good guidance. And I hope the CDC is up to the task. Yeah, I hope they are too. Uh, one idea I saw floating around somewhere, and I, I can't remember who suggested it, so I'm sorry to be stealing it from whoever <laughs> did suggest it, would be to spin off the kind of um, data collecting function the CDC does. Like, like have, have it like, uh, like the Bureau of Labor Statistics or that kind of thing. So here's just where part, uh, a different agency is just responsible for gathering all the data we have on COVID, on monkeypox, on other diseases. And, and then there's a different agency that gives recommendations based on mm. those numbers rather than having it all the same people relying, well, which data is being used? Because there was a lot of, uh, it, it was clear that, um, and, I, and I know you did talk about in your radar, this new study that had a more favorable result for mass mandates. But uh, a, a year ago, when the, the kind of um, mass guidance was changing in the midst of Delta, the CDC was very persuaded to keep rec recommending very stringent school policies based on some studies out of Arizona, some other places that were not very good studies. And, and so the CDC said, didn't quite explain why they were mm -hmm. changing their mind. They're like, we're changing our mind about this. And then finally, it was like, okay, well, we did it because we looked at these studies. Mm -hmm. And then the public uh, health expert, including David Zweig, who we've had on the show, other people, you know, looked at these and said, um, 
Actually, these studies aren't very good. They don't, they yeah. don't really show yeah. what you're saying. I think so that's, it's... that's really fair, especially because right now there are a lot of political incentives to stop mm -hmm. keeping records, to stop keeping information. Because like I said on my radar, Biden wants COVID to be over for political reasons, not because he cares about you or your business or your family or your school, I'm sorry, but because there are very strong political reasons to say, I was able to get this under control. This isn't a crisis that I can be held responsible for. So to the extent that there is an incentive to not even track cases anymore or not have people testing so they can have plausible deniability that the thing is over. I like the idea of having some independence there. And look, from my perspective, I don't want to cherry pick studies. I'm not interested in doing that at all. Mm -hmm. But I do want to, look, I was a history of science major. I, I don't want to just take some superficial headline at face value. I want to know if there's a mass study that shows that masks don't work. Is it that the masks don't work or is it because they, have they been tracking compliance with the mask mandate? Have they tra been tracking what kind of masks were used? Have they, is this like a bunch of five-year-olds who are unlikely mm -hmm. to be compliant or are these adults in a healthcare setting that you know, are compliant but also is the healthcare setting a higher exposure place, so they have to right. take that into account. Yeah. I just want to know. I just want to know. I don't have a dog in this fight. I just want to know. And I don't have that sense, and I don't think you have that sense, and most people have that sense, that there is a repository for that kind of information, even two years into this thing, and that feels really negligent. Mm -hmm. Or do they appear to work because the people still wearing them also limit their other social behavior? Right. Yeah. And is it the case that if they didn't, then as soon as there's an outbreak, it doesn't really matter whether yeah. you're masked or not? You know what, Robbie? Maybe we should participate in a masking trial since we are <laughs> obviously occupying similar spaces, and we'll if you commit to wearing a mask and still do all your other risky <laughs> behaviors, we'll know if masks really work or not. If, uh, if we were just studying the two of us, it would certainly look like masks save you. The number of times um, I've, I've been ill, even since just hosting the show, has been noticed by our, our commenters. I've, I've had a rough, uh, my immune system's had a rough time. Yeah. But, uh, and yeah, you, but you did get COVID finally. I did get COVID, yeah. I think, from taking an international not from trip. Not from this guy. Not from that guy. I also was not doing some of the other things that I mm. typically do to keep up. But look, I shame. On a Let's seven, get the shame bell. Shame. No, but it's not. Shame. No, we're it's just not kidding. about shame. But here, here's the thing: like, I took a seven-hour flight, and normally when I've been flying during COVID, I don't unmask during the entire flight. I have a high-quality mask. I, I I hook it over my earphones, and my ears don't get sore, you know. And I can like last through the whole because back of my ear, back of your ears don't oh, get my, sore. Oh my! Oh, they absolutely mask. do. Yeah. So I, I have a trick to yeah. put them over my headphones so they're not touching my ears, and I and I don't take a sip of water. I drink up, and then I I take care of my toilet behavior when I get off the plane. This time on a seven hour flight, I couldn't do that. At some point I got a breakdown. You gotta have a drink on a seven hour flight. And Margarita, and a glass happens. of wine. That's what I think happens. So look, that's obviously not science, that's anecdotal evidence, but I'm, I'm glad that the CDC is acknowledging some of its failures and I hope that improving tracking, just as Biden has an incentive to pull back from a lot of these programs, an independent organization keeping up to date with what's really going on is more important mm -hmm. uh, than ever. Mm -hmm. And stop stop telling us to not eat like medium rare steak. We're just <laughs> we're going to do that anyway. More rising after this. <laughs>